can talk about the summer court now. <laughs> oh my god. Summer court's real pretty. It's very pretty. Very relaxing. Very pretty. Very uh, the, definitely. The waves. The waves the, coming crashing up on the beautiful the turquoise. Shores, turquoise, you know, shiny. Um how do we feel about the court? Um the young lad Tarquin? Yeah, he he seems okay, a little wishy-washy, but okay. Um, however, I do not like the prince and princess. I think what it is, too, is it's that whole typical, like, court thing, right? Tarquin is super nude being high lord oh he yeah he, he so he and he has well, a lot his of father was killed down right under. and he has a lot well and it he's only like what like 70 something? 80 years old yeah which yeah. is really young for Faye. yeah and when you think about it 50 years of amarantha yep so he doesn't even know he's almost like Feyre in a sense in fact i think Feyre knows more about the courts than he does um he didn't grow up in a time where you you actually got to see what the how the courts really are right. how old school they are how um, it's all a game right, right. It's that whole like you know we don't trust anybody right. we're all for ourselves right and I think that's what you see with the prince and princess yeah is they're older than him and right. they grew up in in a court environment and so you're seeing the flirtationness you're that... talking about Cressida who's the princess yes her oh my god with Reese. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Joseph. And so Mary. he's trying to find out information right. the best way he can. Right. And that's and the you, flirt. Right. And you have to understand, too, that everybody distrusts him. Okay. Right. Because he wants everybody to. I mean, he keeps up this whole facade that he rules over the court of nightmares. He's super evil. Well, he rules over two courts. But they don't know that. Right. So the only court they know about is. The Court of Nightmares and the Illyrians. The Illyrians are a warrior race, and the Court of Nightmares are evil. So they and and because mm. in order to rule over the Court of Nightmares, like and again, I'm not trying to skip ahead. We're not going to talk about that, but you saw that a little bit. Yeah, you'll see it again because obviously we'll go back there again. But in order for him to rule over them, he has to be like them. Otherwise, he won't be able to to gain any respect. Right. So he has to pretend that that's he belongs there. So, everybody just assumes that he's this evil, horrible person, that he was actually working with Amarantha, you know? Mm. All that stuff. Right. So, everyone distrusts him. Tarquin, though, is the only one that actually seems to kind of trust him again. One, because he does no experience. And two, the only amount of time that he's known Reese is when he was under the mountain and he realizes that he, you know, he was actually trying to help. Right. Um, and so that's why he's kind of giving him a little bit of leeway. Right. But everybody else, like his other family members, his advisors and everything, they all totally don't trust him. Right. So Reese, I think, was picked her because she was the easiest, because she's a woman and, you know, he well, probably yeah. couldn't. He's not going to get anywhere with a man. No, no, no. Unless they're gay. Oh, and then Fera with, uh... Tarquin. Tarquin. I th Tarquin was attracted to her, I think. Yeah, oh, I think so, too. I mean, he didn't trust her, clearly. But, no. But he was definitely, like, well, into her at least a little bit. Yeah, well, she, you know, she's pretty. But, you know, he's... But he... But you, I couldn't imagine what was going through your head. I remember you because I remember you because I gave you a drop of my essence, yeah. you know? Right. And so, you know, and you saved us. And he made it very clear, too, after a point of time being there, you know, she did save us. So please don't right. discredit her. Don't be rude to her. Mm-hmm. You know, if it was not for her, we would not be here. And so that that's a good thing. But it's like the flirtation that she did to go with him to figure out what was going on. But the jealousy that she had towards Reese with the, with the princess. And then what Reese was hiding that he had with the other one is like... 
why don't you two just get it on right now and just get it over with? It's also the first time, I think, that she realizes that she, that has, she has any kind of feelings. Feelings. Because she says it's emotions. That's what I'm feeling. I'm feeling emotions. I'm feeling emotions. <laughs> Deeper yeah. than I'll ever... Oh, never mind. <laughs> We're going to keep building these uh, playlists here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think with Reese, though... He is always connected to her because of the bond. <laughs> yes. So, like, when she's on these dates, I mean, we don't see that, like, because it's from her perspective. Right, right, right. But you can kind of assume that, obviously, he's hiding a lot of it. Right. But you can kind of assume that he's probably hearing everything that's going on yeah. on these dates. Yes. And when she even says that, you know, he tried to come in, yeah, you know, or that little knock or nudge was from him and she shoot it back at him, that's... That's just so funny. But it's like, you know, they, he, he, the Lord, the high Lord there was like, you know, he took her to see the trove and gave her this beautiful black diamond necklace um, to have. And she, like, really didn't want it because she really felt like he was a really nice guy. Yeah. And that, you know, being a really nice guy, that he deserved to be loved. For who he is, that she didn't want him to change. She didn't want anything bad to happen no. to him. Yeah. She really inside felt, you know, icky and bad about what she was there for to do. You know, it's not something she wanted to do, but there was a purpose for doing it. And, you know, she was afraid that it found out that, you know, he would call her a liar and, you know, just shit bothered her. And then, um, Reese too, you know, he, he Reese, even there's, you know, he also talks about how he wanted to work with him and all right, that, but now know, it's not going to be possible because no, they're betraying him essentially. Yeah. And, you know, and then when she asked about that building, you know, it, it, come on now, why would you think she would ask about that? You, it could just be the whole area. It was beautiful. You don't know that she has that ability to yeah. ask about that. And, you know, um, when he says, well, it's being worked on, and she changed the subject, and she talked about, well, how about if we go in and do this, and da-da-da-da-da. She's trying to take you away from it. For one, she doesn't want you to hound on it. And two, you know... It, she realizes she got what she needed to know. There was a reason why you don't want no one nearing that. So, and it wasn't of, just him, right? All, all the table. of them were met, upset. Well, everyone from the, Summer Court, the Summer Court, yeah. was upset about that, and so it confirmed that that's where she felt it was, and you know, I, it's like, what do you do? What do you do? You know. And then there, they, the, all of them that were there, their rooms were conjoining. So they were, Reese just came in and out of her room. <laughs> and, you know, and, and them too. Oh my God. And he like walks right up to her and puts his arms up against on the table. Well, it's and because it's they're like, having a, they're having a little argument about who's being jealous. And yeah. Uh, crap. Yes. And it's like, go ahead, light that candle behind you. <laughs> and instead of lighting the candle, she actually brings water into the room and then splashes it all over him and gets herself wet. But it's just hilarious. It's like, would you two just get it? Go get, you're in a room. You got a bed. Just fucking get it over with. You know? But, oh, whatever. <laughs> they just keep going back and forth. Cat well, and I mouse. mean, they're supposed to be friends. Cat and mouse. You know? Yeah, come on. Sometimes well, friends with benefits can work. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm like, you know, it's like. They're supposed to be friends. Right, right, right. right. Well, and, they are. They yeah, are they are. Friends. Yeah, they are friends. And, um,. You know, he doesn't, he really has no confidence. Like, all that stuff is no. just a big lie. Well, I mean, for 50 years, he was that bitch's whore, you know? And that's what all he ever heard. And, you know, when you're, for 50 years, I mean, for us as human beings, that's a long fucking time. 
you know, for them, it's a bad of an eyelash. I mean, I guess if you're being tortured and yeah. in prison, that's a long time. Right. And, but, you know, yeah. but it's, but you're, you're being called out, being called a whore, being manipulated by a woman that's a control freak, disrespecting everyone. The only other person that had freedom other than you was Tamlin. And the only reason why Reese had any freedom is because he had to pretend that he was for her. Right. And doing this for her and doing that. Which he would do X amount for her. But a lot of it was for him to figure out what it is that he needed to do, how mm-hmm. he needed to do it. To... And then he would sleep with her and do right. all sorts of things too, which is how he got the whore thing. You right. Know? And so... That does a lot. It it can destroy a person. Mm-hmm. So he has his own anxiety and depression he's going through. And he he knows that nobody will ever marry him because because he says this multiple times to her. Um, because she asks about he's never been married or something, right? And um. He's like, well, you know, nobody would marry me because out of all the courts, I mean, his court is the most dangerous and he's supposed to be evil and he's the most powerful high lord. And so any offspring he has, any, any, fa- his, his mother and sister were murdered. You don't know all the specifics about that yet, mm-hmm. but it's, it's who, nobody of uh, high birth or anything like that is going to want to be part of a family like that. Right. And so it's like, he's just kind of feels defeated, you know? Right. So needless to say, they go visit, what is it? A town or another city that belongs to them for the day. And they came back and that night Mm -hmm. she goes in with Amran, Amran trying to get whatever it is. And they had to keep going down deeper and deeper. Right. So they go into the temple which is, uh, the temple's only visible during low tide. Right. Because it's completely submerged. Right. Um, and so they only have so long to do it. And Reese winnows them there and then, like, is circling above because he's, like, going to watch out for any kind of guards or anybody so that they stay undetected. And the two of them go and they have to, like, go through the mud and they have to... Then she has to try to open the door and then she actually uses Tamlin's ability she completely shapeshifts her body into Tarquin. And that's how she opens the door. Oh, wow. Did you did you miss that part? I did. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's why she was talking to herself, trying to get herself to change. She's like, I am, you know, the sea, and I am da-da-da, I am yeah, Tarquin. Yeah, I remember her saying I am the high that, lord of but summer. But I didn't realize that she actually... Yeah, she completely shapeshifts. I just shapeshifts. thought that she was... Um, because it wasn't working. Scenting, you know, saying it to put the energy out yeah. there. That way it would detect who she really yeah. was. Because from what I remember, when they, she first goes up to the door and tries to open it, mm. it doesn't work. Mm. So then she ends up oh. completely transforming into him. And then it opens. Yeah, because um, she had to go down and... Uh-huh. And, um, there's the, water, there's water everywhere inside. because, you know, it is something that is submerged. So there's going to be water where at a particular level, mm-hmm. but the book is in this like chamber where there's no water and there's like these clear walls. That's like holding the water out of the room yeah. or something. And it's in a metal box. Yeah. And the metal box talks and goes, who are you? It's no, the book. You, or, talking, yeah. Well, it's the book. Who are you? No, you're not. You're a you liar. Yeah, because she's basically <laughs> trying to say that she's the High Lord of Summer. And... Yeah. No, you're not. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> yeah. So but as soon as she grabs the book, it's it because... sets off some sort of an alarm or like a system, like a security system. Well, it also burns her hand because of the bo- it, the book is inside of yeah. a metal box. Yeah. yeah. And the metal box, I think, is iron, which is not. Or maybe even ash. Well, iron doesn't do anything. Okay. The humans think iron well, does something, it, but it doesn't. It, but it was... It, it, something... It, it was, grabbed a hold of her or bit her or something. Yeah, it, it, it was some sort of, like, 
security thing. Yeah. So to keep you from taking the book. Right. She puts the book in her pocket. Pocket. But it's all of a sudden that water just starts flooding, flooding into in the because chamber. Because it wasn't her. The door shuts. Yeah. Amran does some sort of magical thing where she's able to like open the door to get them out. Yeah. And then they're in well, another only until the next level. And, but it's still flooding, flooding with water. Yeah. Um, they pretty much drowned. Yeah. Well, they were drowning. And then the back from the first part of the book, um, the woman or the... The water wraith. Water, yeah. That Fera gave jewels to to feed her family, sent her sisters there to or, or that was in that lake or ocean to come in and save them to get them out and they go our sister's debt is paid because mm-hmm. they saved them if it wasn't for them they would probably would have drowned yeah. and died yeah they would have drowned so um interesting to say to least but you know they finally Get with Reese. Reese gets them out of there. You know, they wind up back in the... <laughs> Reese says that they, like, let off every uh, alarm that there was. Possible. Like, <laughs> in there. There was, like, <laughs> all sorts of guards and everybody, like, And he goes, I was knocking them out. He says, should have wiped their minds. Well, yeah. why didn't you? So... And, well, he also says that he's really rusty. Like, right. he, had, he, he hasn't he just, done it for a while. Yeah, he hasn't... Yeah, he's been it's, locked up for, you know, right. 50 years. So. But so he forgot, to, you know, he forgot that's what he could have done. So next morning he wakes up, he's sitting out on the terrace for having breakfast. And there's these three red robin eggs inside of a box. You're talking about the blood rubies. The blood rubies. Yeah, they call them the, yeah. the, the yeah, size I, of a robin egg. Right, but yeah. I was wanting to say what they were called in the book. So yes, the blood yes, rubies. Yes, yeah. the blood rubies. And, um... Basically, him, her, and uh, Amar, uh, Amar, I don't know the girl's name, the other one. It was just the two of them on the... No, three of them. The each oh. movie for each one of them. Oh, yeah. It, one for him, one, one for, for Feyre, and one for Amran. Amran. And Amarin, it means Amarin. that they, they basically ha- cannot go... They, they've got a price on their head. they got a price on their head. So, oh, imagine that. <laughs> So, as time goes on... <laughs> and Reese had to buy Amron a lot of jewelry. Yes. To keep her calm so that she wouldn't go over there and just destroy the entire summer court. Yes. <laughs> but he's really depressed, though, when she goes he's, up there. He is very depressed, and she gets him out of it. About talking about buying lingerie. <laughs> I, oh my god, that part where she's ah! like, she walks off and leaves him, and, he, and she starts having this like pornographic like thing about what would have happened if they had gone to the thing. Yeah, and it was and, him putting it in her head because she let her defenses down. That is so funny. <laughs> and and they, oh yes, and and he would just send the workers home, and it would just be him and I, and and I would be in that little red number, and I'd be like. <laughs> I was like, what? What? <laughs> um, and then it, and she's like, oh, you! <laughs> and then you can hear him laugh. And the, it's, funny. it's so funny. Yeah, them two, they really need to get it on. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so after that, um, and they decided that they needed to go to night court. No. Oh, oh. night court. Huh? You mean home? Well, they're they already were home. already home. Yeah. Are you talking about the Court of Nightmares? Mm-hmm. Oh, no, not yet. Not yet? They go visit the Queens. Oh, that's right, the Queens! <gasps> Ew! The Queens finally oh, it's, decide it's to It's very late at night. Sorry. It's, well, even if it wasn't, it's hard to remember things yeah. in order. Yeah, it's very late at night, though. Um, but yes, so the queens are a wonderful ray of sunshine. Oh, no, they're not. They're (laughs) bitches. They all need to get stiff dicks. But anyway, so basically they get word that the queens would meet them and they go ahead and go to her sister's house. The father still isn't home. 
They prepared the house the way the queens wanted. They wanted to know how many people were going to be there, uh, what the layout of the house was, how big of the room was that they were going to hold this discussion, and da 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 And I was amazed to find out that these bitches had, could do the same thing Reese could do. They could winnow. Winnow or shimmer in and shimmer out. And more asks them when, yeah. when she's there. Yeah. Um, and they, they they said they wouldn't tell, but they did say that it was a gift that was given to them by the Fae, probably their ancestors, I would right. say. Right. Well, they have to be. Um, and it must be passed down, I guess, in their bloodline. Probably. Or something. But we do know that it was given to them by the Fae back, like, 500 years ago, probably, so. But, um... They were not very nice people. Well, basically, there were supposed to be six of them. Only five showed up. We Only... don't really know why. We don't know why. We know that the other one was supposedly unwell. That's right. all we know. And only two of them actually did talking. The other two, the other three did not. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can't remember what separated them, how their ranking was. But like the ancient or the old, the oldest one, I honestly don't don't remember who the was who. The first one that spoke, I think she was the oldest one out she of might the have group, been. and then the one that actually stands before everyone and speaks, actually spoke. The other three didn't, and it's um, they wanted proof that he wasn't what. That Reese wasn't what they were told that he was. And um, also, something else was said in then the female companion outside of Thera. Yeah. Um, kind of gave them a history lesson. Yeah. Um, so they're there just because they need the Book of Breathings. That's yeah, all. They, they, just, they just want the Book of Breathings. But right. they find out... That the queens have no interest in saving everybody. No, they don't. They're only interested in saving their own territories. Right. Or saving whatever they can save. Yeah, but that book would be saving them. Um, and Nesta gets really upset. Because she's human, and she lives in an area that is not part of a city or anything where these people, these queens are living. Mm-hmm. And so her whole area is going to be basically left with no defenses. Right. Um, and so she's really pissed it's about in the that. South. Because they, the queens basically say, well, the Fae should protect you. We don't care. Right. And, of course, you know, Nesta's really upset about that because... You know, the Fae are supposedly these bad, horrible people that are going to come and, 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 you know, you're, you're raised to believe that. You're, you're, you would expect your own people to protect you. <laughs> exactly. I don't remember Which exactly what would she says. Which human. But yeah. Right. But knowing Nesta, <laughs> yeah, she basically gives him a piece of her mind. Mm-hmm. And Moore also gets really upset. Yeah. Because Moore is actually famous among the humans. And they were like, oh, she's Moore. Right. And they also know that she well, can't Anna. lie, right? So, right. like, one of her things is the is truth, right? Right. And, um, she worked with these people's ancestors back in the day. Yes. Um, and so she gives them a piece of her mind as well. Yes. It's kind of um, terrible. And they make it very clear that they didn't want to hear from them unless they had proof. And then when they had proof to offer them, then they still had the right to decide whether or not to let them have the book. Right. And to be completely honest... More is entitled to that book than anyone because it's written in her language. We found that you out. Mean, well, not more. Not more. Um, uh, Amron. Amron. So if Amron wanted to go cray cray on them, she could go in there and get it. Because well, she's the only one that can read the damn thing. Well, the problem is 
that, and we know that what's going on because Asriel's been going the, pretty much the entire, every time that there's something going on in this book, he's been like going there and trying to figure out how to get to the Queens, right? right. To get into where the book is. And he can't figure it out. So otherwise they would have just gone in there and taken it themselves. But it's like heavily warded and supposedly it was set up by their ancestors. The, the 500 years ago, the Fae, who helped the humans during the war set up all of these gar- these things so that the Fae couldn't get in there. So it's debatable whether Amran could get in because Amran is Fae right now. She's not at her... Oh, she's not in her own body? That's and right. And she's trapped. Which is another reason why Reese wants her to keep the book, right? Because he even mentions that, yeah, she can read it and she we can use it to nullify the cauldron, but... After we nullify the cauldron, she can use it to free herself right. from the, her body and, and go home. Right, right. Um, so I think, I don't think Amran can because mm. she's Fae and she's restrained just like everybody else. And True. they don't want to go in there and trigger all these alarms and then they'll never get the book. So. Well, so if those know. queens can get shimmer in and out. Why can't Reese go in there and say, all right, I know exactly where it is. Go in, take it, and simmer right back out. Well, because well, it's warded. Um, Anytime, it, w- awards mean you can't winnow in and out. It's the same thing with, like, with the House of Wind. Um, you can't winnow into the House of Wind, right? Mm, you have to fly up there or walk up the steps. True. So if something is warded, you can't winnow in. Oh. Unless your wards are crap and that person's way stronger than the wards. Mm. Like, Reese is able to winnow into the spring court a lot because Tamlin's wards clearly are not that great and he's way more powerful than Tamlin. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Oopsie! <laughs> that right there tells you. Um, oh, but, yeah. But apparently the wards or whatever was set up around this book was, like, really, like, heavy-duty stuff. Well, that's really stinky. Because it was meant, that it was meant to be kept separate because they were trying to avoid... This was like created like 500 years ago when humans were slaves and th- they had the war and, and they were trying to protect the humans, right? right. So they weren't thinking of yeah. other possibilities of what could have happened in the future. Okay, so time moves on and they th- these women just shimmer out mm-hmm. or way out or whatever the hell they want to call it. Winnow. Winnow out. And... Um, They they were rude. They and were so rude. Very rude. And so they all went back home. And um, wasn't it not too much longer after that that then they said that they went into the night court? Right. So they're going to the night court because they need to get the orb from Moore's father. Um, so Moore's father, or basically her family... Um, are kind of like the king and queen of the Hewn City, which is the name of the city that's the Court of Nightmares. Um, he's called the Steward because obviously Reese is really the king. Mm-hmm. But Reese barely, he doesn't really, he just lets them do their own thing because they're evil or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so he lets her, the, the their family just kind of run things all the time. Um, but he has this orb that the humans know about because it was used 500 years ago. Um, and so there's obviously just like more and other things that have been passed down. Um, they but know, show them truth. Yes. They know that whatever they see in it is it's the truth. truth. It's not going to be a lie. They can't manipulate it in any way. Um, but because it is in the court of nightmares and it is a, the property of Kier, that's his name, uh, Moore's father. Um, they have to go into the court of nightmares and you can't just walk in there. And even though Reese is the high Lord, um, because it is the court of nightmares and they're all super evil and because they are evil, they have no allegiance to anyone but themselves. They will sell out any information to anybody. Um, well, it's cause they're all demons, yeah. but yeah. um, they're all, yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, they have to come up with a plan so that Azrael's going to go in and just secretly like use his shadows and go in and take the orb. So they have to create this distraction plan. Mm-hmm. And also because this was a kind of a quick meeting, usually when he sh- when Reese shows up, 
there's more like he makes a, like a it, like an announcement and all of this, mm-hmm. and they they don't want to raise any suspicions. Right. So they have so he basically basically makes it like he's he's there to show off that he took Feyre. That's the whole plan, right? Right. To kind of make it look oh this is why he's really showing up, not for the orb. So they work out this thing, and we know now that everybody knows that t- she's not with Tamlin anymore. Right. And so he uses that as the plan. Mm-hmm. And he's basically trying to, like, rub it in everybody's faces that she now belongs to him instead of Tamlin. Right, right. right. And so they go to the... Oh, boy. So she goes in with more first by herself. Oh, actually, I'm skipping a part. Right. Because they get attacked. Yes, that's what... Before they get... And who the hell attacked them? They don't know. They couldn't find any trace of them. Nope. Nothing. But Reese wanted her to go stay... Away, he was gonna send her away, and she didn't want and it. she's like, "Don't send me away." And he—you could tell he was pissed. Mm-hmm. But he let her stay. He let her stay and help, and, and help um, track and all that stuff. They didn't find anything, right? Um, and then they, and then of course they go to the court of nightmares, but they all don't go in together because they have this whole plan that they have to work out, and Reese has to have this grand entrance and all this stuff. So. Feyre and Moore go in first. Moore, Moore walks her through the whole court. And then they end up in the throne room. And they have this banquet and this party going on. Because you know, they know that he's going to show up. And mm-hmm. um, <laughs> Do you have anything you want to say about this whole scene? Oh my god. It's just crazy. <laughs> and he just like really oversells himself, I think. Well, she could even feel him before he even shows. Yes. Because he just, like, he just lets out his power. Because he holds a lot of his power in. That, right. But when he's there, he just, he's like, he doesn't out. hide anything. No. Like, he just lets all the power out. So she, yeah. like, could sense that he was in the building. Right. Before he even walked in. Yeah, and it's like, she's like, oh, my God, he's here. Oh, my <laughs> yeah. God, I can feel him. Oh, my God. <laughs> You're just like, oh my god. <laughs> it's like, oh, I never felt that before. <laughs> but it's like, it was overwhelming. And, you know, she is like, reminding herself she has to stay on key, on, on task, you know. But it was all new for her because he's always held so much of himself back. Mm-hmm. And um, they really give a show. Oh my god, Becky. <laughs> she plays the whore part just right. Even though she's not a whore. I don't think she's she was not. playing. <laughs> I don't think that was acting at all. <laughs> I, you know, to be honest, I was even thinking to myself, oh, she's going to let him have it in a sense like you know oh you okay I can actually get away with what I want to do with you without you knowing it because I can go ahead and act that part and just the things that were being said between the two of them and what other people were like looking at and her little moans and groans and and the head drop back and the little whispers in her ears and it's like she he licks her on the neck and then yes. she licks him on the neck yeah it's just they're, they're so <coughs> sensual to each other and sexual to each other and his fingers going up her thighs and just it was so naughty it was so naughty I mean, I seriously thought for a minute they might actually get down and bump uglies with each other. Everybody actually, everybody. I, think, I think they probably would have it, but he stopped. It. He did. Because it's the same old thing they always have all the time, where it's like, he thinks that she's just acting. You're right. All right. And he's upset about it. Yes. He stops it because she, like, freaks out. I don't even know if I want to talk about this on here. Come on, come on, come on. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Um, I mean, we're talking with adults. Well, <laughs> well, she feels him get hard. Yes. 
And she's shocked because, again, you have to remember, like, if, we're the reader, right? We right. know, okay, there's a lot of sexual tension. This right, is, right, right. It's just, you, like you said, just get it on already. Right. But in reality, in the real world, this is how people are. You right. don't know what the person's intent, you don't know if this person really is interested in you. Right, right. Maybe you're reading it wrong, right? right. Like, right. It, she didn't realize that he actually was attracted to sure. her like that. Right, right. So she's very shocked by that. Right. And then, um... You know, she gets wet or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she freaks out because he finds out about that. And he knows that she freaked out. Mm-hmm. Because... She's she's embarrassed. Uh-huh. And he thinks she freaked, he freaked out, or she freaked out for another reason. Right. Not really that... So he doesn't actually think that, sh- that she's actually attracted to him. So here they are, they're both attracted to each other, but each other thinks they're not attracted to each other. Well, she knows he's sexually attracted to her, but her little dialogue in her mind is is that, oh, he's probably like, I'm not sure. Like, okay, he was sexually attracted to me in the moment, but it's like, does he really want to be with somebody? Maybe he's not ready. You know, all the things that happen to him under the mountain. He probably really doesn't want to have sex with anybody. Right, right. And and then she's also thinking he's probably not serious. Like, it's all just, maybe it's just a sexual thing. And he thinks no one wants to be with him because he was trapped underneath the mountain. And he was, what we'll call it, tour. And that's all everyone ever saw of him. And that he's evil. And da 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 da. And, and that she, he... she's in love with Tamlin, too. Right. 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 And that she could, could I mean, yeah, she left and she said she left. But she could go back she to him go... at any time, you yeah. know? He doesn't know what's going to go on. And there's even a scene that we didn't talk about, too. Well, I don't remember exactly what the scene was, but he. Maybe it's later. Maybe it's after this uh, thing at the end, but he. Oh, yeah, it is. It is. Um, after they leave the Court of Nightmares, he basically, because they have this little argument. Right. And he basically says that he's going to be the villain, regardless of what happens in the situation. And Tamlin's like this innocent, sweet, wonderful person, even though he's an absolute asshole, just because of the way your their reputations are. Because she belongs to Tamlin. And regardless of whether she left on her own accord or not, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and because of his reputation, he's going to be treated like a horrible person right because he stole her right but while while you while they're still there and their little tit for tat is going Mm -hmm. on i think she got up and went to go get something to drink Mm -mm. he tells kier to get her a glass of wine oh that's it right to kind of just well they're trying to distract him mostly right because it's his orb right and and then he comes back with the wine, but because they're so, like, involved in their little sexual thing, he, tat, he doesn't yeah. want to, like, come up and bother them, so he just stands there with a the glass of wine, waiting, yes. waiting, you know? But... But he... It's what he says. But after. So, like, after he... Like, they stop, right? Because uh-huh. Reese stops it because of the whole thing where she freaks out, and he's like, you know... Don't worry, it doesn't mean anything. It's just like it's happening in the moment. It's not because you're attracted to me. It's because, you know, you're doing all of this Even stuff. Even though they're both attracted to each other. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But he doesn't believe that. Right, right, right. So he stops it. Um, Azriel comes back, says he, he nods, and so he lets everyone know that he has the orb, that right. everything's and okay. He more and he himself. lets the he lets Kier deliver the wine. And mm-hmm. then he tells Feyre in her mind that okay, you can go, Cassian's waiting, he, you can go. Mm-hmm. So she gets up, and she's walking out, and then he gets up, and he's going to follow her out, and that's when Kier calls her a whore, or like, you're going to get what's coming to you, you whore, or something like that. And I think he tr- he gets triggered because that's what he was called. Probably. I mean, obviously, there's it's because of her, but I think he really, really loses it, too, because it's a trigger. Just like she she has triggers, like certain mm-hmm. things trigger her. Um, I think that was one of his triggers, that whole, like, being called a whore, right? Right. But he lets him have it, too, and says, how dare you call her that? If it wasn't for her, we'd still be trapped. Because weren't they... I'm pr- I thought that's what he said. No, the Court of Nightmares actually was fine during the time of Amarantha. Really? Yeah, because they're all evil. They all they actually wanted Amarantha. 
Okay, so... Yeah, he didn't say anything about that. Well, he, he just, did something to him. Well, yeah, he broke his he bones. broke his bones. Oh, okay. And his arm, I think. Was it his arm? His arm, or... And he said, next time it'd be your fingers, or something. Or was it his fingers, and the next time it'd be your arms? So he breaks one of his either arm or leg or something. I don't know. He breaks it and he says, "Yeah, he, because he was just being an asshole." But I don't think it just triggered him because that's what he was called. I also think it's because not only was he called that by something he didn't do, and he know he really didn't do anything mm-hmm. wrong. He was just doing it, trying to take care of not just a few handful yeah. of people, but tons of people that. You know, he knows she's not either. Mm -hmm. She's just playing a part. But you don't know that. Right. But I know how she is. And she's a very nice person. And, you know, just going through through the emotions on the inside, that that's probably why he snapped. It's because of of two reasons. Well, yeah. Yeah. It's it's definitely... Definitely because of Feyre. Right. But but the the intensity... the, The intensity of it. Because you have to remember, Reese is very... Like, he always acts like nothing bothers him. Like, he never overreacts. Even when he's angry, he never really says yeah. anything. He keeps it all very, very well contained, and he just, like, did not contain himself at all. No. Because she's in his inner circle, and he said that. Yes, yes. At the beginning of book two, that anyone who messes with his inner circle will have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So, she is part of his inner circle. Mm-hmm. And then it, it ended not too long after that. Well, yeah, they, they leave. Yeah. And then they get into the argument. And I, the argument's kind of interesting because I think it's a reaction to the situation before. Yes. They have they have a lot of conflicting things going on. Well, because they... they I think they're finally realizing that there might be more there than just the... Yeah. For each other, you know? Yeah. It's not just a friendship friendship anymore. There is some attraction there. Yeah. Whether they want and a to lot of it, it or and not. And I, I think we should clarify, well, at least this is my opinion, that I think it's more Feyre than it is him, right? Because Feyre is the one that is, like, going through this discovery, which is, like, you know, she was with Tamlin, and she's still not sure about how she feels about that. And she says she loved Tamlin. Right, and she probably still does. Right. And But she's not 100... She says she's not going back, but she's right. not 100% sure about her, her future, her past. She's not... She's kind of in a limbo period, right? right? She hasn't made any, like, commitments or right. anything like right. that either way, and... Um, but it is emotion she, she's feeling. Right, she's starting to, to she's starting to actually feel things, mm-hmm. and this the situation that she was in in the court of nightmares makes her kind of think, okay, well, she now knows that she's sexually attracted to him, and yes. they've been flirting, and now it's bringing up all of these things like she's a horrible person, you know, she was with Tamlin now, it hasn't been the, that long, like she just she she's adding it to the list of things she's already feels bad about herself, right? right. Like she thinks she's a traitor and she thinks that she's Which a murderer. Is the same thing he does to himself, right? Right. So, but that's a shame. But to me, shame, Reese shame, is shame. not on a discovery. I think. No, he's not. He knows he knows who he is and everything. But the point is, oh my God, you know, I, I did this. W- with her, and I told her that it was nothing. What if she does feel something, or... Yeah, he's he, going through a, a vulnerability issue, right? Right. He's not used to being vulnerable with people, and he's been vulnerable with her, and the stuff she says to him, because of the vulnerability that she's opened up to her, she says things she probably shouldn't have said to him. And that's kind of where we ended it. Yeah. But again, that's that. They both have an attraction to each other, but they don't know that the other one has that same attraction, or what level of it, or level. what right, what what is even going on yeah, at all, it, right? It, is it just sexual? Is it is it on a deeper level? Is it just friendship? Is it but for her to be, I'm sorry, but for him to get a hard on because of what he was doing with her, that straight. And yes, there was sexual attraction there, 
to begin with with him the way some of the things that he said to her in the past mm-hmm. but to physically get a hard on while the girl that you that gave you that hard on is sitting on your lap in a book yeah. <laughs> is like that's a major clue that that you like that person i'm sorry but well, at least just, you're sexually yeah, attracted it's to very them. sexually attracted to them and to have that female on there knowing that she's probably trying to do her best to let you know and a little bit how she feels and, you know because she was jealous and she knows you were jealous and you know because she actually had realized she had some type of feeling emotion for you and then um, you whisper in her ear and tell her, don't worry about it. It's just, I know it's just all an act. You just took her from being in heaven mm-hmm. to like, fuck. Right. You know, damn it. Yeah. What the hell did I do? <laughs> and so it's well, like. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Reese is scared, right? He, 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 they're both scared. They're scared for different reasons. Yes. Right? Like, he's more scared because he's being vulnerable and he's afraid that he's just going to lose everything. everything. Yeah. Um, and her, it's more, she feels ba- just bad about herself. And she's just not sure about what she's doing, to be honest. Like, yeah. Because he's afraid of losing her to Tamlin. I believe deep down inside. Oh, yeah, he totally is. Yeah. Or just in general. Yeah. Because he doesn't really know how she really feels. Right. And... He's afraid that she could just, you know, it's that whole thing where you're, you're friends, but you're like afraid to say anything. Yeah. And then if you say something, you could either get friend zoned or that person will just be like, ah, and then make things awkward. And then, you know, you're not friends anymore. Right. So he, I mean, he's just afraid. I mean, yeah, he's afraid of the Tamlin thing by for sure. But yeah, but he's also just afraid of just losing her in general. She is probably afraid because. She already fell for someone. She already loved them. She feels like a traitor. And, you know, she was mistreated by him. You know, she wasn't respected for her thought process for how she felt, but wanting to be there um, or be with him. She was locked in a home. And, and not because of lock and key, but basically shielded into a house that she couldn't get out of. You know, or being told, no, you're not going to do any of that. You're going to stay here. And then his rage. I mean, I've not seen Reese do any real rage until then. And it wasn't at her. No, it was never at her. But Tamlin had rage issues. For absolutely no reason. No reason at all. He, like, he was just, like, really... Psycho! <laughs> And I mean, she pretty much had to cocoon herself to protect herself. Not knowing that that's what she could do, but, mm-hmm. you know, if she didn't, he, she probably wouldn't have been alive. You're absolutely the right. The story would have ended then. You're absolutely right. So, we wouldn't even have... If she was human, man, she would have been dead. She, for sure. Yes. But, you know... Uh, but, yeah, so we left off, um, we read through chapter 43... We have how many chapters left? I forget. Well, we're starting 44 the next time. Mm-hmm. And I think there's like 69 or something chapters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think. I could be wrong, but it's at least around there. Yeah. Um. So we should have the, the other book finished by... Or this book. Yeah, sorry. This book. We should have this book finished mm. for the uh, next episode. She's not that far away from chapter 54, which is my favorite chapter of all time. Yeah, you keep telling me. 54 to... uh, Well, 52... I thought you said it was 52 to 54. Was it 54 and 55? So, okay, so 54 and 55 are very famous. Okay. 55 is probably the most famous. But 54 is my personal favorite. Okay. But both of them are very well-known chapters. The... Theme music that I've been using for this second book, mm-hmm. written by Kelsey Woods, is actually titled Chapter 54. 
<laughs> so you're not that far away because we're starting 44. So that's 10 chapters in. Uh-huh. So there you go. 10 whole chapters. Mm-hmm. Bleak, yeah, I'll be gone. It will be probably. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, we're going to um, call this episode um, as it stands right now and tell you all thank you again. Um, stay tuned for the third part of the second book. Um, A Court of Mist and Fury. Yes. And then uh, we'll have probably one or uh, another podcast out for our divination stuff. So Yeah. Uh, we appreciate all of you again. Thank you so much. Um, it was really lovely to see all of those numbers. So please like, subscribe, share. We really appreciate it. Have a great week. Take care. Blessed be. Bye. Bye. And if you would like to contact us, you may do so at our email, eclectic soul podcast at gmail.com our instagram account is eclectic soul podcast our facebook is eclectic soul.org our youtube is eclectic soul jen if you want to reach me my personal website is music and mystery my soundcloud is the soundcloud page the soundcloud.com slash Jennifer dash Feltman. My Facebook is at music and mystery and my Instagram is at music and mystery. And if you would like to reach me personally, my Facebook is at just call me Jin Jin. My Instagram is at call me Jin Jin or look for goddess. And my Twitter is at Jen Sullivan. Thank you and have a blessed day. Blessed be.